Hey Lovers, it's Lavity6 here with another video. I don't think people realize how prevalent theft is in China. I'm talking about it's so common and so prevalent throughout the country that I think it's almost begrudgingly accepted. I remember having students come in back when I was teaching that would say, hey, my dog was stolen. And I'm like, what do you mean your dog was stolen? It turns out there's thieves that steal dogs that sell the dog for dog meat in the dog meat markets. I had students come and say, oh, my house was robbed last night by a bunch of thieves with knives and we lost all our cash because a lot of Chinese people keep cash in their house and a lot of valuables. To me, that was shocking because I was coming from a country that sup supposedly has a pretty high crime rate. Yeah, I had pretty much never been a victim of crime other than the odd fight here or there. I had never been a victim of theft in my own country uh, of the USA. However, I was a victim of theft so many times in China that it just slapped me in the face pretty much every year an incident would happen. There is a network of thieves, and I would say that the, they could loosely be called a guild. Um, a lot of them are owned by local mafias. The lowest tier being like a, a pickpocket. Oftentimes they'll go in large crowds, i.e. everywhere in China, and use chopsticks or metal tongs and stuff to take out your phone or your wallet. And I was actually, uh, I think it was my first week in China outside the bus station in my city of Huizhou. And uh, I saw, a, I think he was probably like 12 or 13 year old boy. He was walking behind a woman trying to get her phone out of her purse. And I yelled, I yelled thief in English because I didn't even know Chinese at that point. And the woman turned around and she said thank you and she like scurried off and the kid ran away. And I thought it was just like a, whatever, it's like a, a normal pickpocket thing that you'd see outside of a crowded bus station. But a little while later as I'm walking down the street, two, two guys came around the corner and one of them, they didn't pull a knife on me, but one of them had a knife behind his belt and he pulled up his shirt and he showed it to me and I ran across the street and I jumped on the back of a motorcycle taxi and I told the guy where to go. I had my address memorized at that point. And then he saw this guy like coming from a distance like towards me and I was obviously very flustered and nervous and the, the price he quoted me in the beginning was six RMB, which is like a dollar at that time. And then he doubled it and he told me it was 12 RMB because he saw that I was like in a rush. I was like, whatever, go, scumbag dude, taking advantage of my situation. Anyway, that was my first brush with theft. But that's like the lowest tier stuff, right? I mean, I've had so many things stolen. I had a motorcycle, you know, a good five, 5,000 something dollar Kawasaki motorcycle stolen by a friend of mine who I didn't know was into crime, but it turns out a lot of people had been victimized by him. But he waited until I was on vacation in the US to visit my family. Uh, he made a copy of my motorcycle key when I let him borrow it to run an errand one time. There's these, and the thing about China is there's these stalls all over any major city or even small town China, which will make copies of keys for you. And it was a traditional old school 2005 or something, 2005 style key, so there's no chip in it or anything. And he got a copy of it and he stole my bike and I never heard from him again. Uh, he actually had it repainted. I saw it on his WeChat moments. He painted it like gold and it looked horrific. But anyway, I had my car still, uh, stolen. There's videos on that though. It has nothing to do with thief gangs. And the highest tier of thieves are kidnappers and human traffickers. And I, I've mentioned this before, but just in the park near where I lived in Huizhou, there had been five, historically been five children that had been kidnapped where my daughter uh, plays. And there was no, it was never on the news or anything like this, but you'd hear from the other parents there that had uh, known the people that were victimized. And what they would do is they'd pull up like a work van. It's called a mian bao chi. Uh, we call it a bread car. It's just a very nondescript metal colored shitty van. And what they'll do is they'll have the, the human traffickers basically hanging out outside the van. And they'll have a, an already kidnapped child and they'll put them in the crowd of children in the park. And that kid's job is to lure them closer and closer to the van, more or less. So these kids will be playing and the kid is like trying to, you know, big himself up, big herself up and be, you know, part of the group and then slowly move some of the kids away. And they'll specifically target uh, people that their parents are on their phones or they're talking to other people, or they're doing something else, false sense of security stuff. And then when they get close enough, they'll chuck them into the van. And there's so many more sinister things that happen after that, but of course I won't get into that. It's just horribly depressing and awful and it really wrecks me mentally to think about what these kids have to go through. But it's so prevalent that you just hear about it nonstop, right? I mean, a, a, a good aside is my one of my friends, his apartment was broken into, it, he lost everything. I almost had my par apartment broken into actually on video. Uh, we call him Spider Boy. There's this boy that was climbing up our building and he was trying to get into uh, our hallway area so he could kind of 
there's this weird like hallway between my office and my house and you can you can definitely scale the building and he'll look for open windows to try to get in there but i ran out with a knife <laughs> and he's he scurried off they're usually they'll run away if they're going to get caught that was like sometime at night but you know what's funny is they also have a huge network of contacts and they'll find out when there's someone that not that's not home or it's a single woman and this is actually what spark, sparked the idea for this video i was doing i can't remember what i was doing something up in inner mongolia i had already moved back to guangdong to be with my wife but i was doing something up there for a couple weeks i think i was ending my contract with the university yeah that's right i was ending the contract with my university up there and when i <laughs> when i was up there my wife called me and there was a thief literally right below our bedroom window and this is on government property by the way this is not when we were living in like our own apartment this is in government property there was a guy climbing up the very, very scalable short building that we lived in. That building only had eight floors. And he was right below our bedroom window. And my wife starts screaming at him. She calls me and I'm like, what are you gonna do about it? I call the cops and stuff. And she's like, hold on. And she grabbed a pot, like a potted plant and chucked it at him. And it whacked him on the shoulder and he just slid, kind of slid down and caught his way all the way down the building. But he like, he scurried off and he was like all messed up. and clutching his shoulder and it, I think he damaged one of his ankles or something. <laughs> but it's just so, it's so prevalent. And the reason that he knew that I wasn't there is that, like I said, there are people watching and waiting for opportunities for this, right? And I found something that I've always wondered what it meant. There is, there are these like hieroglyphic type things that the thieves use to communicate to each other. And they'll oftentimes um, go inside of these apartment buildings w that have really bad plaster work done and they're easy to etch on. You'll see kids playing around with it too, but they have secret kind of symbols that they use to make marks on certain apartments. Now before any, I've, I've gotten this argument before when I made a post about this. Why don't they just text each other? Everyone has cell phones. It's not single family housing. So think about this. You're in a network of thieves. You're gonna you know, help each other out basically and you know, split the rewards. It's not like every man for himself in this scenario. Everyone's helping each other out. They'll often pool the profits. Yes, they will tell each other, you know, through GPS or through WeChat or whatever, where an apartment building is. But once you're inside there, some of these places will have 200 units, if not more, right? So when you're scaling the stairwell, you're not going up the elevator. When you're scaling, scaling the stairwell, running back and forth, trying to look for marks, you're gonna look, look for these marks. You're not gonna be looking at a map that somebody like drew out on WeChat about every floor plan, right? It's much easier for a thief to go scope and like the watchers and thieves go scope something out and put etchings or markings outside so that the other thieves know what's going on. And I found this key uh, where actually there's a bunch of thieves, ex-thieves online that helped decode these and then a lot of people confirm them and police also, Chinese police also confirm them. There's like three different languages of these codes and they're kind of creepy. Um, but then there's universal symbols that you can find all over. And I used to see these all the time outside of my apartment, outside of pretty much every apartment that I went to. Uh, the first symbol here is this marking means that this family is rich. I found that very interesting because that's like, you know, the dead giveaway. It's like, you're definitely going to want to to rob this house. The second one with this X through the circle, that means that the family is poor. This is Meitian. So it's not worth them actually robbing. Uh, the third one says, uh, usually there's people at home during the day and then at nighttime they come home like on time, on schedule. So that's one to be wary about, right? The next one says in the daytime there's no one and sometimes they don't come home on schedule. So that, that'd be one that thieves would be looking out for too. The next one says the homeowner is very careful. So you got to be aware. Uh, the next one says this family is very rich and they said fat, it's a fat duck. That means there's a lot of spoils to, to be had. Uh, the seventh one over here says that they have an alarm system and that's something super rare. I don't think I've ever seen a home alarm system in China. They have bike alarms and they have alarms on pretty much every scooter and car, car alarms especially, but not really in houses. Uh, the next one says it's too dangerous, not worth it. The next one says no one lives here. So there's probably nothing in there. Uh, the next one says sometimes people are at home and at night they don't come home on time. Uh, the next one says this family is is full of old people or pregnant women and kids, so it's easy to rob. They often like to target uh, homes where there's like women or kids and stuff because there's more distraction and there's less less people paying attention to that kind of stuff. Uh, this one says already uh, this house always gets robbed, so there's not much stuff left. <laughs> That's pretty awful. 
There's an, another version. I've seen a lot of these symbols. These are kind of these are kind of creepy. The first one is um, already planning to rob this house, so don't 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 rob that. And you'll often see the X outside of people's houses. Uh, the next one says, um, "In this, you'll find this outside the apartment. It'll say this one has about four or five houses that are robbable. So you're telling the person you can enter. There's like four or five marks inside of here already. Third one says it, uh, they're very rich. Next one says it's too dangerous. Avoid it." Uh, next one says they have dogs, and that's definitely you know something that thieves are looking out for. In China, it's not super common to have a dog inside your apartment, but it is more and more prevalent nowadays. Uh, a lot of rich people like to have those little lap dogs, uh, and oftentimes they'll actually uh, try to dispose of the dog. If it's like a really good mark, they'll find a way to get rid of the dog first, either through poisoning or they'll try to steal the dog away uh, or kill the dog so that they don't set off any alarm bells, more or less. And keep in mind, like the prevalence of, of home invasion and theft is so common in China because your neighbors probably won't do anything about it. Like, unless they're specifically targeted, they probably won't call the cops or they won't really do anything about it. It's this bizarre, like, lack of Good Samaritan culture within China that if it's not your business, you won't, you won't do anything about it. The next one says, uh, there's lots of cops, and probably cops that live here. So keep in mind, cops are civilians too. They live among civilians. Uh, next one says, be aware of the neighbors. So maybe these are very scrupulous neighbors. Uh, this one also says, have an alarm. Next one says, really easy uh, to be found, like really easy to be caught. Uh, it's trying to rob this place, it's too dangerous. This one says, no protection, easy to rob. So that's a big mark. Uh, next one says empty house. Next one says single lady. So that's another big target. They love to target single women. When I lived in a single apartment, like a single room apartment in my first year in China, a lot of my uh, neighbors, so to speak, were actual prostitutes or dancers at KTV or clubs. And they were single women that would live in these tiny apartments because their pimp basically would put them up in these places and they could have clients in there. And it was also super cheap. It was only like 80 bucks a month or something rent. And so they would often be targets of theft. And you wouldn't think so, because they're not, they don't make a ton of money. They're not keeping a ton of stuff on them. But number one, they're they're committing crimes. So they can't really go to the police about that. And number two, a single woman in China is not going to do much against a, a couple dudes with potentially you know holding weapons. Um, next one says one kid, two women, women, and one man. That's not a standard one, it just means that. They'll often say, like, who lives there? Maybe they have three kids. Maybe they have one kid. Maybe they have no kids. And they'll put that mark in there so you, the thief knows. Uh, this one says, people here work for the government, which is definitely a warning sign because if you rob a government official and they find out who you are, your punishment's going to be a hell of a lot more severe than if you rob some poor dude. Uh, next one says, it's not worth it. Nothing's here. Uh, next one says, no need to enter this one. There's another one that says, like, don't, don't bother. And this one says, it's already been robbed. So these are ones that they've decoded like throughout the country, but there's actually some universal ones that I've seen everywhere. And these, these can be found everywhere. And these are the police. The police have decoded these ones. So that's why you find other versions of them. They're too easy to figure out. Uh, this one says, there's people at home. It's a plus and minus. There's people at home during the day and no one at night. Uh, and the sign is reversed. It means that there's people here at night and not during the day. The little uh, eyeball looking things it means that it's a single, like a single person lives there. The dot 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 means that there's three family members. All right, this little square root symbol, uh, that means that somebody's already entered, already gone in here. Um, the star means that it's a potential target. So somebody's already targeting. And then the X means it's not a target. This house is not a target. So these are something, these are things you'll see like when you're walking through the stairwells of Chinese apartments, pretty much all over the country. And it's pretty crazy the um, amount of thieves that actually exist within China. And the tools that they use are pretty insane. Like oftentimes they'll go through the peephole and they'll have like a curved bendy metal thing basically that will open the door. And they, they people in China really care about their doors. You won't find like the typical flimsy wooden doors that you have in America. They'll be like these really thick doors. Oftentimes people have like a metal one protecting that one. So you have to go through two barriers. That's how my house was. But they'll still open those up with their tools. They'll pop through the people and they'll go down and open up the handle. They have all kinds of crazy, crazy ways to get uh, get things done. Uh, car theft as well. There's some really crazy stuff where they'll actually re they'll have uh, jammers that will jam like a uh, uh, locking the locking mechanism on your key fob. And they'll do this in like uh, rest areas so that your car doesn't actually lock and they'll find some way to actually steal your car. It's pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, I just thought this was kind of interesting. It's a very 
I think a very uniquely Chinese thing. I know that there's different, you know, little hieroglyphics around the world. I know that hobos use them in the U.S. But this one is kind of interesting because you can find it in pretty much every apartment block uh, if you look carefully enough. Don't forget, the Wuma t-shirts are almost all gone. There's only, I believe, a few days left on those. So if you want to pick one of those up, if you want to tell the world that you know what a Wuma is, a paid Chinese internet nationalist troll that is pro-CCP, and you, you, in fact, behind the, uh, the screen there are anti-censorship and anti-Chinese censorship and anti-communism. Pick up one of those and show the world that you, in fact, know what a Wu Mao is. And you'd be supporting the channel as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay safe, of course, uh, especially if for some reason you're in China around Chinese New Year. Uh, that is the time to get robbed because everyone needs money to go back home to their hometowns and visit their family. I know I'm probably talking to a lot of people that don't have to deal with that, but I hope you guys found it interesting nonetheless. Thank you for you guys uh, joining my patron, patron.com slash 86 Behind the scenes content, you can talk to me directly. I answer messages every single day, Monday through Friday, and you're helping to support the channel as well. I really appreciate it, guys. And don't forget, every Monday, you can check out ADV China, which is our motorcycle talk show on two wheels. Every Wednesday, you can watch me, Law86. Every Friday, you can watch Serpent ZA for a different perspective on Chinese material and just in time for a beer on Fridays. And don't forget, every Tuesday, this is our new our new channel, is Worthless Whips, and that's our car channel. I really think you guys will enjoy it. You don't even have to like cars. If you like the rapport between uh, me and Winston, I think you'll enjoy the show as well. And every other Thursday, we have ADB Podcast, which is our long-form content about uh, stuff that's happening in China. Thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.